everybody, I'm Nettie Kay. Welcome back to my studio. Things have finally started to settle down a little bit here in the United States. Hallelujah. So now we don't have to watch the news 24 seven uh, and we can go on to doing something else, maybe like uh, learning how to paint or, uh, you know, taking a shower, that'd be good. So uh, we are going to learn how to do some clouds today, how to start a painting with clouds and uh, doing it without initially without a paintbrush, uh, well, maybe a little bit of paintbrush, but not too much. Our main tool of the day is going to be paper towels. Okay, and these are Viva paper towels. Uh, not that I'm sponsored by them, but they just are the kind that don't give off lint. So you want to find paper towels that don't leave little, you know, bits of fuzz everywhere. Or you can actually use old t-shirts that are cut up, or maybe, you know, that ratty pair of underwear that your husband uh, doesn't want to let go of, you know, sneak in there, get that one, cut it up and use that one. Okay, just saying. So uh, now I have on my easel, I have a masonite board. Now you can do this with canvas uh, or uh, linen canvas. Ooh, that's nice. Cotton canvas will work. But I'm finding that these uh, masonite boards really work super well for this particular technique. This one's been toned with some color I've got a little bit of blue, a little bit of purple, a little bit of yellow, and then I just rubbed it all down to where I couldn't get anything more off of that. Okay, so you just wipe it down, and it's still, um, it's you can still pull stuff off with thinner. It's not like it's set in stone dried, you know, for five days. It's only been maybe about an hour ago that I did this. So on my on my palette, I have some white, a little bit of bright yellow, some uh, transparent orange, some reds, uh, a little quinacridone violet, some phthalo blue, some teal, and some dioxazine purple. You just pick out your favorite sunset type colors and put those out, and then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with those fun, pretty colors. Okay, let's get going. Now I'm going to start out with a little bit of our phthalo blue, uh, and I'm using this rather thin, everybody. So when you do a sky, uh, you wanna make sure that your the top of your sky is darker uh, than where it comes down to the horizon. And so we're gonna start out with that deep phthalo, phthalo blue, and that's just a, a beautiful, almost like a denim blue. It's um, uh, it's just absolutely beautiful, and if I add white to it, it you know, it just uh, stands up and shouts. But we're going to keep it up in the dark range for a second. I'm going to add a little bit of maybe dioxazine purple in a couple of spots right there. Ooh, man, that's nice. And then I'll wipe this off a little bit, and I'm going to move up to a little bit of our, um, our cobalt teal. This is cobalt teal. This is a Gamblin color. I'm sure other people make it, but this is, just happens to be the one I'm using right there. So now it's getting a little bit, a uh, little bit lighter. And then I'm going to add maybe just a tiny touch of white to that. Yeah, that's nice. So you see, it's getting lighter and lighter as it goes down. Now, as I, I'm going to rub this in a little bit, and it will, uh, you know, automatically pick up the background of the the panel and, and it'll make a lot more sense once we kind of rub some uh, paper towel into it. So that's a nice uh, beginning on this. Yeah, nice. And then I'm going to wipe this off. Uh, let's see, I, I think I'm gonna rinse out my brush a little bit and then I want to add some um, of this beautiful quinacridone rose and that's a that's a serious color, very serious color. Uh, it seems extremely strong, I know, uh, but it won't, uh, it'll make sense in just a minute. So I've got this and I'm kind of just laying it out. I'm not worried about any cloud shapes at this stage, wiping off my brush. Now I'm gonna go into some, um, some of my uh, transparent orange with a little bit of white. Now I'll take a look at this. This is gonna be so amazing. Transparent orange with a little bit of white. And maybe I'll throw a little bit up into there too. 
Yeah, look at that. Okay, now I'm going to wipe my brush off a little bit more. I think I'm going to add a little bit of that bright lemon yellow down here. This can get a little bit tacky sometimes, you guys. And I'm not talking about how it feels to touch it, but it can. you can get a little garish sometimes. But, you know, when you're first practicing, this is really a fun way to uh, get your wheels on. Okay, now let's go back in with um, a little more white on our brush. Look at that. Ooh, that's so nice. Okay, a little more, put a little bit more down here, like that. Now, I know I just said we were going to be using the paper towel. Just hang on, it'll, it'll happen. Now, I'm going to come down with a little bit of our teal, and I'm going to add just a tiny bit of yellow. You've got to be careful, you don't want a green sky. But I want something that looks a little bit like, like Viridian, okay, Vir and you can use... You can use Viridian, that would be a lot easier. But I'm going to put that down in here just for fun. And now a little bit more of our blue color there. A little more blue, a little more teal, and a little more white. Okay. Just, just for something interesting. Maybe I'll throw a little bit of that up into here. Ooh, that's pretty. And then bring some of that color down in here a little bit. Now, I think uh, I also would like a little bit of a dark shape over on this side. So I'm going to take some of the uh, dioxazine purple and, uh, and I think I will put a little bit of uh, the purple with the rose over here and maybe just a tiny bit more of that white, white color. So I've got a little lighter purple in there and just keep, just keep layering it on, have some fun. And I don't want to get too pinky down here. I did that one other time and, and lost it. So we'll go back into that, um, that teal color. Teal, teal, teal. I'm running out of white. I'm going to have to get a little bit more white. And there we go. That's, that's a good start. Okay. I know that looks just crazy, doesn't it? That's just crazy. But it's kind of pretty at the same time. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to dip my, my paper towel in here. And, and we're going to work really hard at not making rhythmic patterns in our painting, all right? You know, if I gave this to a, uh, an eight-year-old, for, for instance, they would make a cloud and a little cloud, and it would look like a, a, a rhythmic marking of a bunch of cotton balls going across the sky. This is not what we're trying to do. You want to change the shapes here and there, so there's larger shapes and smaller shapes. So let's just see if we can give this a try. Okay, wet paper towel. I'm going to start right up in here, uh, right above this pink, and I'm going to begin by making some little um, marks with the thinner. And I've got to get this a little bit more wet. Now this is one of the days that I do wear a glove on my hand. You know, sometimes you'll see me painting without a glove and, and uh, you know, I probably should wear gloves all the time. I know some of you guys do. And then you see I'm, I'm just moving that around and, uh, and, and softening up some edges and then um, picking up and pulling off some of that paint that's on there and moving it around. So if I want to have kind of a a big, a big fluffy cloud right here, and then I flip the towel over, get a, a nice clean spot like that. And then we just do that. And so it begins to um, bring up some interesting cloud shapes. Now I'm just going to bring that dark down into it a little bit. That's with no thinner on the top, so that I keep the color, but it just is smooths it out a little bit. So I get a nice contrast right here. And the contrast will even be greater when I come back in with another round of the thinner and I come up here and begin to just take out some more of that uh, paint and reveal a little bit of a lighter tone. Sometimes it takes a bit of rubbing. So we're doing that. Look at that natural little uh, thing. And I'll come over here 
and uh, start developing these, these little clouds on the way over. Now I'm going to come back over on this side and we'll come back in and maybe do a reverse and have it kind of overlap that, that um, not that towel, that uh, cloud. And then I'll take a nice clean area and begin to shape these out in a natural, just happens naturally when you're doing it this way. So I do one set of clouds this way, then I overlap, and I pulled up some of that orange into the, the cloud above into that, so there's some of that little orangish color coming up. Let's get another towel here. And uh, it gets a little messy. You go through a lot of towels. Hmm. My dad does had uh, was a landscape painter, and he said he'd go through a roll of paper towels every time he sat down to paint. And now I understand it. I wasn't a landscape painter when I started out. I started out as a, as a portraitist and uh, moved into still life, if that's not the funniest order of things. So you see how what happens is these, the paint that you're pulling off leaves a stain onto the canvas or the canvas or the board. I'm finding that these boards are probably the best for this technique. Uh, you can use uh, cotton canvas. Linen canvas is better uh, with this technique, but uh, you can use that, and um, I'm sure it will work in a similar way. It's just not quite as effective. Now, I'm just going to take a dry part of the paper towel, no, no thinner, okay, no thinner, and I'm just going to soften the sky a little bit with that and pull it down so I don't have a lot of paint strokes up behind the cloud. I don't want the strokes behind the cloud to be kind of out there and uh, causing a distraction. I want this to kind of be the, the thing here. All right, now I'll come down with what I had from up here on my rag and create a darker area so that that cloud pops out forward. All right, does that make sense? Dark will accentuate light. Light will accentuate dark. Okay, that's what we always have to keep in mind when we're painting. So now let's come down uh, down here a little bit, and uh, I'm just going to kind of create this. I'm not sure about this kind of green color that I accidentally ended up with, so I'm going to pull that up a little bit into the, the sky. And uh, again, this is probably not going to be a, a finished painting in the end, but I wanted to show you how to use this to start a piece of work. This is extremely strong. I'm going to take a, a dry cloth. I don't want to lose it all. This one I don't have any thinner on. So try some areas with no thinner and some with thinner. So I'm keeping that pink nice and strong and then I'm going to roll it backwards up into this cloud a little bit like that. So I'm keeping some of that on my on my cloth and not losing it. And then I'm going to put some of that pink down into this area down here. I like that. I'm going to counterbalance this awful green that I accidentally ended up with there. That's working. And then, oh, I want to pull this, this blue out. So I'm going to put that blue. You see, I've, I've got it on. I know I've got it on my cloth. So I just kind of add it into some of the areas down below. And then, once you figure this out, then you can add all kinds of things. You can add a, a seascape. You can do it to a seascape. You can do it with uh, mountains. You can, you know, just put your, well, skies go over a lot of things, don't they? So, okay, now this is kind of a yellow, and so I want to be careful not to, to lose that by mixing up something that is, that doesn't work. I hope this is going to work. So, clean towel this time, and we're going to come into this yellow there, okay, that's good. It's got a feel for a little bit of sunshine right there. Pull that down like that and uh, make it make it look just a little more. Remember, there's no sharp edges, you guys. No sharp edges on clouds. They are soft. Look at that beautiful orange that just kind of accidentally happened right there. And then uh, I want to just soften that just a little bit with a bit of a dry cloth there. And then it just keeps, you can work your way down. You can throw a big mountain in the middle of that. That'd be just wonderful. 
So I'm just rubbing that in, softening up the edges. And of course, later on, I can come back in. I can come back in and paint with positive paint. This is negative paint, which means I'm pulling some off. And I can do positive painting or adding paint on later, uh, and especially after this has a, a few moments to dry. Okay, so uh, let's get that. Now, let's, uh, let's see if we can pull up just a little more highlight here and there. And I think I want to do that right about in here. So, yeah, like that. And kind of connect those shapes up like that. Not crazy about that brown there. So I'm going to drag a little purple back into it. Remember, purple and orange are, uh, you know, two kind of complementary colors, or purple and yellow. Am I right? Yeah, purple and yellow are complementary, so they'll make brown. And you got to watch out if you put green with red, you're going to end up with brown. There's certain colors that make nothing but gray or brown. So uh, these kind of work a lot with harmonious colors, meaning reds with purples with blues are harmonious colors. They're not opposite to one another. As, as clouds come forward, you guys, uh, if I were doing a full scene, I would say, okay, as they come, like the clouds that are up above you are going to be larger because honestly, they're more close to you. But if, as they're going off into the distance right here, uh, they're going to become a little bit smaller and a little bit more of them as they go back into space. Okay, let's um, see if I can explain that and demonstrate it. So, say right uh, down here, these, these uh, should be, and I tend to make these a little bit more flat and, uh, and a little bit smaller. And so I'll take these just and make them get tinier and tinier. See, these are big and bellowy, and these will be kind of really small. And if they don't have enough color to them, I'll just add more, more color as I go. Let's see what happens if I add uh, just a little bit of, hmm, that's some, maybe some of that blue, bluish color down in here, bluish green, like that. And we'll just kind of create this these smaller, tinier, more close together kind of, uh, maybe not even overlapping, but just, you know, something like that. Let's go like this, and there's more atmosphere, so I'll make them a little bit lighter down like this as they go into this space, and then maybe I'll put in just a touch of that, that pretty transparent orange and then I'm going to throw that into this area here. We can just keep adding more color. It's so fun. It's super fun. A little bit of dark. It's a, you know, uh, make some observations. My friend um, Julie Conrad has been shooting uh, some beautiful photographs for me. And uh, so I'm going to be doing a painting of one of her um, lovely, lovely uh sunsets very very shortly and so it will be a, a fun to try this technique and paint one of Julie's beautiful photographs we've had some beautiful ones lately now I'm going to take a little bit of light pink on my rag this time and I'm going to just work that in in some very soft little rubbings of pink going across into little areas like that. I, I don't want to go all the way down to the bottom. It's just getting a little too hard to, <laughs> too hard to do. And then I can also take uh, maybe a, the end of my paintbrush like this, wrap a little paper towel around it like that, and put that into the thinner and begin by, you know, creating some smaller little highlights with my my paint, the end of my paintbrush wrapped with a paper towel too. All right, well that's all I'm going to do on that particular painting for right now. So uh, one of the things I'd like to encourage you to do, uh, we are trying really hard to get our subscribers up to 10,000 uh, within the next two months. We're at about 
5,800. Do you think we can do it? Oh, I hope so. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And the next thing is, there's that little uh, link that says share, okay? Well, you can put this video right on your uh, Facebook wall, or if you know somebody who paints, put it on their wall. Yeah, I'm sure they would like to enjoy it as well. So don't forget to do that. That'd be a big help. And, oh, and don't forget to go onto my Etsy site where you might find a few little sunset paintings here or some birds or some dogs or whatever. And uh, you can uh, get one for your own collection. Yeah, that's right. So next time we meet, who knows what we'll be doing, but it will be a lot of fun. And uh, we will just have to see what happens. Ooh, I can hardly wait. All right. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm.